Welcome back for another bonus video this week. I just had some extra filming that I've done. I've been kind of trying to get some deep cleaning done and I just had so much that I decided to throw in an extra bonus video. I hope you guys enjoy and it can help you get some midweek cleaning done. My name is Alyssa and I do all things cleaning, organizing, and just kind of talk about mom life. So if you're interested in that, I'd love it if you'd subscribe and join my YouTube family. We're in my boy's bedroom and I'm moving this dresser out of there after wiping it down. We are going to be tackling the walls, baseboards. We're going to be doing a deep clean on the carpets. I will be slow vacuuming and I will also be just doing some carpet cleaning. So it, this video is very satisfying and if you have some deep cleaning to do in your own house, definitely play this as you clean along with me. To clean the baseboards, I just have a bowl of hot water with a squirt of dish soap and I'm just scrubbing everything down and then if there's anything that's really stuck on there in the cracks by the caulk, then I'm actually going to take an old toothbrush, scrub it away and then wipe it down one more time. This just does a really detailed job. I do actually have damp dusters. I don't know if you know what those are. They're kind of these spongy things that have become pretty popular and they're nice in a small space when you're near a sink. They just have to be rinsed off so often that when I'm doing a full room or the house I really just don't prefer to bring them out so I'm going to use my preferred method for deep cleaning and that's just regular old water a microfiber cloth and just a good old old toothbrush that you no longer use anymore now I've moved on to cleaning this wall I'm just using the Zep foaming wall spray and then this wall mop that I got off of Amazon it'll be linked in the description box and we're just going to give these walls a really good scrub my walls are all white and and they were painted with a flat builder grade paint. I do not like flat paint and I definitely want to paint my house someday, but it's just not in the budget right now. So I'm trying to take care of the walls as best I can. Now that most of the baseboards and walls have been washed except behind the bunk bed, we're going to move on to slow vacuuming with my Dyson corded vacuum. I'm going to throw in this clip of me doing the slow vacuum in real time so that you guys can see how truly slow I'm moving. And then I'll speed it up so you don't have to watch me do this for the entire room. 
The vacuum that I'm using is the corded upright Dyson vacuum and I love this vacuum so much. Now that I have a puppy, I'm really thankful that I have this vacuum all ready for me so that when he really starts shedding, I can get all of that hair and debris out of the carpets. It is a really powerful vacuum. I have not had a vacuum with stronger suction than this one. In fact, sometimes it's actually so powerful that it can pull up your carpet fibers. So I use it more for deep cleaning. I don't use it every single week when I clean and vacuum all the carpets in the house. Now I've just moved on to vacuuming off the boys mattresses. Sometimes I'll put baking soda down and let that sit to get rid of odors but today I'm just going to give them a vacuum and we're going to be changing out the loads of laundry throughout the day just to make sure that their bedding can be done by the end of the night. This wall was really bad. It's where the kids sleep and whenever they're trying to fall asleep and they're just struggling, sometimes they'll put their feet on the walls and they'll just kind of tap them back and forth. And so you can tell that all of those dirty feet and hand marks are all over the walls. And that's just life with boys. Even if you give them baths regularly, they really enjoy putting their hands and feet all over your walls and everything in the house. Once I was done, it did look a little better. It's not perfect, and I can't expect perfection with flat paint, but it at least looks a little bit better. Now we're going to move on to slow vacuuming the rest of the room, and then I'm going to get my carpet shampoo out. I ended up taking my handheld cordless vacuum and just attaching the crevice piece tool to it and going around all the edges. And then here I'm just putting a stain remover on all of the stains I can find on the carpet, kind of as a pre-treatment. And then I actually ended up letting that sit and going and hanging out with my family for a while. We went on a walk, enjoyed some sunshine, and letting that pre-treatment sit on the carpet really does help. So now I'm going to go in and do some carpet cleaning. And I like to tie up the curtains so that they're out of the way, especially the ones that are touching or dragging on the floor. The other curtains are actually up off the floor already. It's just the ones over here are dragging on the ground and that is just because they're all the same length but the curtain rod to the right is a little bit lower. I know it doesn't look like it, but I actually sped this up times seven. So I really sped this up and it still looks like it's taking a long time. This is definitely a long project. Whenever you're wet vacuuming, you want to make sure to get all the moisture up out of the carpet. There is an express clean, but for this particular day, I did the deep clean setting on my carpet shampooer and I like to do that um, whenever I'm deep cleaning a room that doesn't get done very often. If I'm just doing an area rug I do those more frequently so sometimes I will use the express clean mode and that one I don't need to go over it like three times it really just is a quick rinse.
Now we've reached the end of our carpet cleaning and I'm going to show you the dirty water tank. It was pretty gross. This is just that room and I love watching a good empty of a dirty water tank. It's so satisfying to know that all of that came out of your carpets. The room smells so good. I wish you guys could smell it because every time I walk in here or I do bedtime routines, the entire room just smells so clean and fresh. I do want to come in here and put some picture frames on the wall and really make this room theirs. I was kind of waiting to live here a little while and see what they're into because they've always been into dinosaurs but they have kind of outgrown the decorations we used to have in our old home and I kind of wanted to see what types of things they're into so that I can kind of pick things to go in picture frames that they're into right now. Here we're just going to change out the laundry and then we're going to go downstairs and continue cleaning. Whenever you do any type of project or deep cleaning in your home, the rest of the home kind of falls behind. So here I'm just going to go downstairs and catch up on all of the dishes I neglected because I was busy elsewhere in the home. And we're going to kind of make our way through the entire downstairs, just kind of resetting things, kind of getting rid of all of the dirt and the debris that collects from kids eating or the dog running in and out of the house. My puppy loves the dishwasher. He just cannot let me do dishes without being here we have kind of gotten him to stop jumping on top of the dishwasher but he really loves just being here the entire time I do dishes so he I think he just likes all the food smells and wants to lick the dishes clean it's just such a big temptation for him and while I'm doing this my husband is actually just rinsing off the patio and our patio furniture grill covers it was very very dirty it was covered in pollen I would bring out the pressure washer, but it gets covered in pollen every few days. It's just really bad where we live right now. And I was tired of seeing all of the footprints and the dog prints. And I know that every single time we go outside, all we're doing is we're just bringing that pollen into our house. And even if we wear shoes and take off our shoes at the door, there's still pollen constantly being tracked in because of the patio. So we've just been every once in a while cleaning it off just to try to help maintain it. And we will give it a good pressure wash once the pollen is kind of settling down and it's not getting covered every single week.
now that I'm pretty caught up on the dishes, there were a lot of dishes to hand wash if you couldn't tell. I actually enjoy hand washing dishes. I don't love pots and pans that when you cook something, there's a ton of stuff that gets stuck to it and you have to scrub them or put a paste on there and then really just scrape everything off. That's not the kind of hand washing I love, but I do actually enjoy getting a brush and just sitting there and hand washing dishes. It's kind of relaxing, but everything else, it's just kind of a chore. We've got to take care of it. The counters need to be wiped down. The fresh bread needs to be put away. Mac is really into sourdough bread right now and he's gotten so good at it and he hasn't been doing it for very long but the bread is just rising it's wonderful it's so much fun I'm just talking to my husband right now we're just kind of talking about something I'm not sure what but I've got a lot of smiles and I definitely laughed a few times so it must have been funny Speaking of sourdough bread, if anybody out there is an OG sourdough bread maker, you've been doing it for a long time, what do you use to store your sourdough bread so that it does not get too crusty and it doesn't get stale? Because it online it says not to use Ziploc bags or plastic wrap because it can hold in moisture and make it go bad, but you can't leave it out. And I've seen some people just use kitchen towels, but whenever I do that, it doesn't seem to work. It still gets super hot. Hard. So you guys will have to let me know what you guys do. I even typed it onto Amazon and it looked like people just wrapped it in a towel and I'm just not sure what I'm supposed to be doing. We love sourdough bread but I just really haven't found a way to store it properly. Until I find something that works or maybe a product that works, I am still putting it in a Ziploc bag or plastic wrap. And I feel like we're at least going through it fast enough that it doesn't build enough moisture to grow mold. But I do want to find the proper way to do it since we're hoping that we can continue making bread long term. And it would just be nice to have something that we don't have to throw in the garbage. I don't really like wasting plastic unless I have to. And I don't really like consuming more than I need. So like I said, if you guys have any recommendations, please let me know. Now we've moved on to the dining room table. This is always a mess. My kids eat a lot of snacks throughout the day and we do a lot of arts and crafts in this family. There's always coloring going on on one side and then they're cutting up paper to make some cool creation that they thought of or invented. I actually was the one who put a lot of this stuff on the dining room table too because we're trying to keep it off of the floor. Right now the puppy eats absolutely everything so if there's little pieces of paper on the floor, toys, their lightsabers, anything at all. The dog likes to chew on it or eat it. So we're just trying to keep temptation away from him and just reward him whenever he makes a good decision and doesn't chew on something he's not supposed to have. Um, but in the meantime, we don't want to leave tons of stuff on the floor, especially when we're busy and we can't monitor him. And that's why I've been putting so much stuff on the kitchen table lately. 
Our kitchen table was really gross. We were in a rush and like I said, I was deep cleaning all day and so all of the snacks throughout the day just didn't clean get cleaned up like normal. Usually whenever they have a snack, I'm downstairs and sometimes I'll remind them, up, oh, go throw your garbage in the garbage or I'll give them a wet rag and be like, up, oh, go clean the table off. But because I was busy elsewhere, I never did that today and that's why the table was absolutely disgusting and every single spot that you can sit was used. Now that I've cleaned off all of the surfaces, I'm going to go around and quickly vacuum just because there were a lot of crumbs on the floor and our sliding door, the dog gets let out over and over again and so there's always a bunch of just grass and dirt on there. If you guys have been around for a while, you guys know that this little area here is my catch-all. I really just put everything throughout the day on it and I decided it was time to clean it off real quick and wipe it down. And then our puppy loves that corner back there. He likes to eat that grass where my fake tree is. And so we've been trying to teach him he's not allowed back there and it's working. He actually does usually make good choices and just stay out of that corner. So we're making progress here. I'm just going to go into the mudroom and tidy and clean everything up like I said just like everywhere in the house whenever shoes are on the floor whenever water bottles anything that's on the floor we've just been putting on a surface so that the puppy can't chew on it so that's why you saw that somebody tossed shoes on top of here there's water bottles backpacks a lot of this stuff goes elsewhere and I'm just going to take the time to put everything away where it belongs this does about wrap up today's video. I hope you enjoyed the bonus video this week and we will get back to cleaning the rest of the house in Saturday's video. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Thanks for watching.